Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar as a part of the Network Women Weave in Future webinar series of 2021. Today's session um, is, I, I, I'm sure we will all agree, that is a very timely session. Um, it's a very crucial session, particularly because um, from next week. Hello everyone um, and welcome to this And especially because um, the COP26 discussions will be starting next week in Glasgow. So it's a very crucial intervention from the perspective of the Kurdish freedom movement and um, the paradigm of the Kurdish people's leader, Abdullah Öcalan. So ecology is one of the main pillars of democratic confederalism. Abdullah Öcalan describes ecological life as a base for the solution of global crisis. How can ecology open the way towards a holistic understanding of the relations between nature and society, love, freedom and revolutionary struggle? This talk by Nujin Derya will examine the ideological foundations as well as practical examples and discussing challenges and perspectives. And I think it's really crucial because one of the ways in which Abdullah Ajan discusses um, and sets out the the centrality of uh, a paradigm around ecology and women's li women's liberation and democracy and how they need to be connected. He also says that particularly in environmental and ecology movements, one of their most crucial work and jobs is to actually gain ideological clarity and to not be reproducing um, the same systems that you know we need to be fighting against to essentially save this earth. So uh, we'll hear from um, Nujin Daria, who is a member of the Andrea Wolf Institute of Genealogy of the Genealogy Academy, Academy based in Rojava, Northeast Syria. The Institute aims to connect women's knowledge and struggles rooted in different parts of the world on the basis of genealogy, which I imagine Nujin will describe a bit as well. As an internationalist, Nujin has lived and worked in the women's, women's village, Jinwar, where women are resisting patriarchy and occupation by developing communal life on the basis of women's liberation, ecology, and democratic self-organization. So without further ado, because we're all here to listen to Nujin, over to you, Nujin. Um, actually, before um, I before I hand over to Nujin, I forgot to say, so Nujin will speak for a bit and while she is speaking, I'm sure there'll be some burning questions as well. So please put them either in the chat here if you're listening to us on Zoom or if you're on YouTube, please put your questions in the YouTube chat and I'll be collating them and uh, asking them for Nujin to answer at the end. Thank you. Yeah, Merhaba from here as well. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone, and thanks for the introduction. It's really uh, amazing, like uh, this opportunity to like speak here, to come here together, uh, this uh, series of webinars as well. And uh, yeah, exactly. So now, um, like the topic of uh, the talk today will be uh, ecology as a revolutionary paradigm. And uh, yeah, as uh, Elif now uh, mentioned as well, of course, like ecology is a very, very actual topic, a very uh, crucial topic uh, in these days and uh, in this, um, yeah, we can say in this period of history at the same time. And uh, yeah, like, of course, like uh, in the last uh, years, like uh, we can see on the one hand, uh, like a uh, yeah, really deepening uh, of, the global economic uh, ecological crisis and uh, global crisis at the same time and uh, this like global ecological crisis is also like uh, yeah it's undeniable uh, in a way and uh, it's becoming very obvious actually and very sharp and very feelable also no like we feel it in uh, like uh, droughts in heat waves and floods and uh, in all the pollution that uh, like is, is very <laughs> obvious and um, yeah, and uh, at the same time, of course, we see like a really uh, growing of uh, ecological movements. We see like a big variety uh, in forms of action. We see uh, a big variety also in uh, like, uh, yeah, like the kind of people who are actually organizing for ecological struggle as well. 
And um, so like, uh, and facing this, of course, it gets much, much more important also to have a like really good and clear understanding of ecology actually and understand ecology also uh, not just as like some kind of cosmetical side issue uh, that can be uh, like solved through maybe planting a few trees, but like really uh, develop an understanding of ecology uh, as like related to like a political perspective, a social perspe uh, perspective. And uh, actually, yes, the, the paradigm uh, and the philosophy of uh, Abdullah Öcalan and the Kurdish freedom movement is like doing exactly this. Uh, and uh, so that's why in this talk today, we want to uh, dive uh, into this uh, philosophy, uh, like, yeah, talk about different aspects of it and, um, yeah, ask uh, how actually ecology is understood uh, in, like, the context of the paradigm of democratic confederalism as well, and uh, how it is related to question of uh, freedom, to questions of, like, uh, relationships, to questions of revolutionary struggle uh, in general. And, um, yeah, and also like uh, we will uh, speak a bit about uh, like examples also, especially here uh, in Rojava or North and East Syria. And uh, then also I'm looking forward a lot to uh, kind of sharing of perspectives uh, on this topic. And um, yeah, so actually, like when we speak about uh, ecology and uh, when we look like how uh, actually Abdullah Öcalan uh, understands ecology, then first of all, it's important to see that, like, what is the aim, uh, for, for example, no? And um, yeah, so like uh, the aim actually is to like uh, develop a like to develop a free society, to, to struggle for a free society. Uh, actually, and um, like uh, and like analyzing actually the uh, like yeah the the situation of of the world, the history, and so on. Like uh, Abdullah Öcalan also comes to this conclusion that actually uh, ecology uh, together with uh, gender liberation uh, is like the key issue uh, in the 21st century. Uh, like uh, that like will be a key issue for the struggle against capitalism. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's also of like very special uh, importance. And um, yeah, and like one reason for this, like uh, this is also what uh, Abdullah Öcalan is, is uh, saying, so that like uh, the ecological problems, they have become so big and so undeniable uh, that like through this actually people are maybe more, uh, yeah, more, more open, more uh, like, uh, yeah, to, to actually question uh, like the whole uh, system of capitalism, the system of power uh, and of state, uh, because it is so like these problems are so obvious because uh, they, uh, yeah, they are happening in front of uh, our eyes kind of. And uh, on the other hand, uh, ecology is, uh, yeah, it's a topic that uh, has like uh, the like potential to form big alliances. Uh, somehow no so there's like uh, people who who uh, are politicized through ecology are coming from very different uh, backgrounds no from very different uh, movements uh, for example like different uh, civil uh, movements or like feminists socialists uh, anarchists or also people who uh, would not uh, like like define uh, themselves as part of uh, such kind of uh, movements and at the same time ecology is a that has a very like a transnational character and also a character that uh, like kind of crosses the social uh, classes also and um, yeah so um, if we ask the question like like how, how do we understand actually ecology then like uh, the base is of course that like ecology is looking at like the relations between nature and society you know like and uh, looking at these relations in all their dimension, no, like so, um, like including all living beings, no, including humans, including uh, plants, including uh, like all uh, different uh, living beings, and um, also like the environment uh, in general. And um, yeah, it's it has this potential to actually yeah open the way and open the consciousness actually to a to a very holistic understanding of the world also 
and um, like we can also ask like uh, how how came uh, how did it come actually that ecology uh, became such an importance also in the in the uh, Kurdish freedom movement and uh, in the paradigm uh, that was like formulated uh, by Abdullah Öcalan and like uh, um, I think in the webinars before uh, it has been also some a, a topic in uh, in a way and uh, so like uh, yeah this 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 point when ecology really became like part of this uh, paradigm is such an important uh, aspect uh, was really when this uh, like paradigm uh, was uh, developed uh, in the end of the 90s um, beginning of the 2000s also but of course like in the British freedom movement uh, like the, the idea of ecology or the idea of like uh, yeah having a holistic relation to nature to the land uh, that that uh, that we live on actually uh, has of course also roots that are going uh, much more like back in in the history also no and um yeah so like for example this uh, first and very important idea also in the formation of uh, like the Kurdish freedom movement, which was like uh, the understanding Kurdistan is a colony, uh, actually. Like here already we find, of course, also an idea about ecology, you know, like if we understand, okay, like, uh, like Kurdistan is a colony, uh, not only colony of uh, like uh, the Turkish state or uh, like uh, Syrian state or the other states around, but actually like a kind of uh, international uh, colony, then uh, like this implies already, of course, like to see uh, that like uh, the land is exploited by the state that actually occupying, uh, occupying it. No? And like, uh, so there's already an understanding of ecology, but the first. Uh, place uh, maybe but this change of paradigm and with this uh, understanding that uh, actually yeah in order to uh, overcome uh, oppression or to overcome uh, like this capitalist modernity we need to actually start with ecology with gender liberation uh, and uh, having this have this as a base and um, yeah, and uh, Abdullah Öcalan was uh, also very much uh, inspired by Murray Bookchin, like, uh, and of course not uh, only him, but, uh, and this concept of uh, social ecology, uh, which basically also says that, like, uh, all, like, uh, problems of uh, ecology are basically rooted in, like, uh, social problems, and, like, somehow rooted in the, like, uh, the domination of um like or the like the how to say like yeah the domination of uh, uh like structures of hierarchy and structures of domination like in society for example no and like uh, social ecology also uh, like is this idea you know that if we want to overcome uh, this uh, like system of capitalist uh, modernity then like uh, we need to first of all overcome this uh, domination and overcome this uh, like hierarchies and um, yeah so and like one uh, crucial question if we speak about ecology is uh, of course also like what what we understand as nature actually no because this is a very like very contested concept also it's a very like uh, yeah has been used in many ways also like uh, nature also has been used uh, to to legitimize or to explain uh, like oppression, for example, no, like because it has been said, no, like because uh, like uh, women are like this and this uh, from nature, then they are naturally uh, should be oppressed, for example, no, this and this uh, race uh, of people uh, like is naturally like this, so uh, they should like uh, naturally oppress, for example. So really, this, this idea of nature has been misused in a lot of uh, in, in a lot of ways. And, that's why also uh, like the this idea of nature has been criticized a lot. No, it has been questioned a lot. And um, so uh, like, uh, but like what, for example, uh, what Abdullah Öcalan does and what uh, like the Kurdish freedom movement does is to actually recover this idea of nature also to say, okay, like, uh, like this idea of nature, we have to also like, uh, like to decolonize also the, our understanding of nature, for example, we have to reclaim 
back this idea of nature also and we have to like really change the understanding of uh, of nature and of society uh, that we have and uh, so how how is um, uh, how do we understand uh, nature and how is Abdullah Öcalan describing nature so first of all um, like in a way that like a general understanding that everything is alive so actually everything is alive and like we as humans uh, as society as communities we are part of this nature uh, we are part of this uh, like cycles of life we are part of this uh, like yeah continuous transformations of life for example and we are part of this nature uh, very much and um, Abdullah Öcalan also uh, like speaks about the first nature and the second nature and the third nature uh, this is something that we also find in uh, like the ideas of Murray Bookchin and uh, others. So and seeing like the first nature as like actually the um, uh, biological uh, world, like the biological nature kind of the um, like the uh, surrounding, like the animals, the plants, uh, the environment and so on. And then the second nature is like a society actually like the cultural uh, like the cultural base uh, what what is happening like what humans are creating what humans are living and um, and uh, yeah what what is now the problem that like this first and second nature they are like they are not uh, like fitting somehow no so because like uh, all like what happens in in like this process of civilization we will uh, I will speak about this uh, also afterwards is that like this cultural uh, nature of the human is like very much uh, like becoming alienated actually from this uh, first kind of nature and that's why actually in a step like in a in a like this idea of like a third uh, nature um like is is kind of the aim to develop a holistic way of living society and uh, holistic uh, relations between uh, society and nature and um, yeah so this is, is is one of the basis and uh, apart from that like um, what what uh, is Abdullah Öcalan saying about uh, nature like what is nature so like um, in general there's like this yeah this unity in diversity you know like what we find in in, in ecosystems very much you know like uh, very different uh, living uh, organisms, very different, um, like also like forms of being, let's say, but they are united in like uh, in an ecosystem, for example, you know, like they are completing each other. Uh, they are like, um, yeah, they they also develop symbiotic relationships, for example, you know, and like uh, like one organism makes possible that the other organism lives, for example, you know, and this is like a very very complex. A dynamic, a very, very complex uh, system. Uh, also, like uh, nurturing each other, actually, you know, like nurturing each other, uh, completing each other, uh, and um, also being in a process of like living, growing, dying, and like having this as a kind of cycle also of life, you no? Know? Like, so uh, of course, like uh, every plant is growing and then is dying again and becomes like, yeah, the, the matter is transforming. Uh, like continuously, you know, it's like a continuous transformation. It's continuous, um, like moving, uh, actually. And uh, yeah, and uh, everything that dies also becomes something, something else. For example, you know, like it's this kind of continuous transformation. And um, yeah, and also like for us uh, humans, we are part of this transformation also. You know? like we are uh, like part of this nature. We are part of this transformation and to acknowledge this is actually already very important because like acknowledging this like uh, we kind of um, yeah we lose this arrogance of of humanity uh, towards nature you no know? like because we see okay we are actually part of nature so we we, we uh, lose this uh, this arrogance or also this distance uh, towards nature and um, yeah, so maybe this uh, about this question of nature. And um, then, of course, it's this question like, how did actually this domination, how did this hierarchies, how did this, um, yeah, kind of also then like a capitalist system appear uh, that then in the end, like destroy the very basis of life that uh, have been there for thousands and uh, millions of years. And um, like, 
uh, uh, refers uh, to like this, uh, yeah, kind of like the natural society. You no, know? I think this also has been mentioned in uh, previous webinars. No, so like uh, it's kind of this thing of like go back in history and uh, like kind of opening up the 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 how to say like the dimension of uh, like how we can actually understand the present also. No, so. Um, and um, so, like, if we if we look back in history, if we look how actually like first forms of civilization uh, were developing, uh, then we see that what is at the base actually of society, like the first like uh, forms of how society were actually organizing, like was this kind of na natural society, like what Abdullah Atulan also calls natural society. So, like, uh, it's a life that happens in like smaller clan structures, uh, like tribal societies, uh, communities. And uh, of course, like because of this particular way of living, uh, being very close to nature, you know? like having this connection to nature uh, as like directly, yeah, like the base of life, you know? like very, um, yeah, in a very direct way, you know, like uh, nature as like nourishing nature as curing nature as also like bring dangers. Uh, that also needs like self-defense of, of uh, the societies, for example, but in general, like having really this uh, like very, very close uh, relation to nature, no? also learning from nature, for example, no? like the first inventions that have been made in humanity, no? like, mm, like a fire, different tools, uh, clothes, how to make this, no? like a lot of things have been invented, uh, like, like uh, on the base of uh, observing nature, actually, like and uh, this, of course, like needs like yeah, really this kind of unity uh, with nature that we can see. Also, um, like in natural society, like very important, uh, like the role of women. No, like we see now, uh, like when we see uh, like what what remains from this kind of uh, from these times, then like we find a lot of uh, like this kind of uh, mother goddess uh, statues, for example. No, that really uh, yeah, that kind of represent uh, also like a yeah, like a a certain understanding of values of, of this time also, no? like which is related to uh, actually fertility, which is related to motherhood uh, and motherhood in a, in a biological sense, but also in a social sense, no? like in the sense of uh, caring, curing, uh, mutuality, uh, nurturing, and uh, like also kind of taking care of, uh, of the society, you know? like also as a, as a social value, as a social principle. And uh, so all this we can say, like it's uh, yeah, kind of um, makes this this uh, natural society in time. And it's about like idealizing this idea of okay, like um, or something like this, but it's more about like uh, like what what other forms of of society have there been and are there still uh, also because this helps us to like uh, yeah to think further also you know? like it helps us to question uh, like the present and it helps us to uh, also develop ideas of how things could could actually be and um, yeah so then of course like in in the whole process of civilization um, like uh, yeah like they have been developing like social systems uh, that were more and more based on uh, centralized forms of power, uh, actually, and uh, like more and more based also on uh, male authority and uh, like what what uh, like uh, we call patriarchy also. No, and um, so uh, yeah, I think the time is not so <laughs> the time is running, so maybe I don't go so deep into this uh, like this uh, process. But uh, I mean, like maybe what is important to to say about this? No, like is this question of like how could these hierarchies appear? You no, know? how could like the centralization of power appear that then in the end like uh, has this like really destructive outcome uh, in the social relations and also in the relations uh, towards nature? You no, know? and uh, yes, it's this kind of accumulation of uh, political power, accumulation of economical power, uh, accumulation of uh, resources, for example. You no, know? like the uh, in the first. Um, like uh, agricultural societies, like after Neolithic revolution and so on, then like kind of, uh, yeah, this, this uh, like collecting or accumulating of, uh, of the surplus or of the, um, like of the product in a way uh, that then was more and more related also with, uh, yeah, with property, with uh, 
certain hierarchies of who has access to it, who not, and so on, uh, connected also to political power, uh, to um, like, uh, like spiritual power or ideological power also, no? And um, yeah, and um, so I have to make it a bit shorter, but <laughs> so uh, yeah, and so we have this like kind of developing uh, like kind of power structures, uh, like which, uh, yeah, where, where on the one hand, uh, like yes, political power is uh, is uh, appearing like a kind of like let's say like the roots of a of a state system somehow, uh, and on the other hand also like uh, we see the uh, the decline of the of um, yeah of the valuation of uh, of women also uh, no and also like the development of certain gender uh, understanding certain gender norms certain gender uh, like. Yeah, ideas of how uh, like uh, how how uh, gender roles uh, should be, and uh, so like the base of patriarchy also, and um, yeah, and then throughout the history, I mean, there is a lot of different steps where we see that actually the relationship between society and nature uh, gets more and more damaged. Uh, in fact, so uh, maybe just as as a few points, like the the development of uh, positivist science also, you no, know, like related to like uh, actually the times of uh, enlightenment, uh, renaissance and so on, where like science were kind of like developed also like as a as something very like uh, very strong, you know, like against the dogmatism of the church, for example, you know, um, but on the other hand, we see in this in this development of, of science, we see exactly um, like that somehow the the way how humans and nature were like perceiving uh, like or how humans were perceiving nature uh, like got a, was breaking somehow no so like uh, i don't know when we see for example francis bacon uh, like how how he's writing about um, about nature that like somehow nature is something that is uh, is to serve humanity actually so nature is something that uh, has to be experimented with for example no like and so developing is kind of this uh, yeah, like a very much the split uh, between like society as somehow like something better, no, like related also to this idea of the sign, like this the signs, no, in the sense of through like really um, yeah proved knowledge, kind of gaining the control over nature, also uh, gaining the control over nature, gaining the control over society, and especially gaining the control over women, also, no, like women's. Uh, that's also very, uh, very, very crucial. I have to make it short, unfortunately, a bit. Um, so, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and at the same time, also, we see, like, which is very important to mention, uh, also the witch hunts, uh, for example, you know, like, that have a big, uh, like, very, very uh, big influence also in, in, uh, in this, uh, in this process. So, like, actually, the, yeah, the system, systematic extinction of uh, like women and also like uh, other uh, like also men of other genders um like on the base of like a lot of times no like like a kind of extinction of like uh, especially women who had a lot of knowledge about uh, for example uh, healing methods you no know? like because they were called witches then you no know? like or uh, women that uh, like actually poor women for example you no know? that had like somehow also uh, yeah, somehow, or women that had a special, uh, like, like role also in society, you know, that were very much accepted in society. Also, women that had a lot of knowledge about, uh, like, reproduction, about, uh, like, a women's body, for example, you know, and, um, like, uh, yeah, and, and in this process of witch hunt, like, this uh, has been, uh, yeah, like, there was this big uh, effort actually to extinguish uh, this. Uh, knowledge and um, yeah, to make it very short, it's a bit uh, pity. <laughs> it's not so much time. And um, yeah, and uh, like also this development of a certain um, understanding of rationality and reason. No, so uh, like very much like this idea of analytical intelligence. No, like, so, like to to understand the world in a very analytic way, for example. No, and. Like uh, also a very um, yeah very very um, how to say like a very uh, special understanding also of this analytic uh, uh, like reality or this truth no like in in uh, related to science and um, 
yeah so um and um yeah and also of course, like this this whole process of like how how like this form of like a dominant uh, civilization was developing were always also like a, a lot of people stayed outside no like there was always a lot of um yeah like uh yeah, people that have then been called like barbaric, for example, no, like uh, nomadic tribes, people who didn't uh, were not part of this uh, dominant kind of civilization, and um, who were much more also representing actually like uh, maybe ecological uh, forms of uh, living more, uh, and then uh, like um, yeah, also of course like uh, then like in history also like industrial revolution. Uh, as it happened in in uh, some parts uh, of the world, uh, which also developed in in a way of okay, like how to make things easier for for uh, for humanity, no. But then, of course, like in like in this close uh, entanglement with uh, like a development of capitalist uh, structures, development of nation states, development of uh, yeah, like kind of these uh, hierarchies in society, class structures, and so on, uh, then becoming a very uh, destructive force actually also for nature. No, like uh, the way how uh, how industrialization uh, and industrialism, like uh, to learn also uh, distinguish very much between like uh, industrialism uh, and uh, industry in general. And and he says, okay. In industry in general is not something uh, something bad, for example. No, it can be very useful for humans. It's necessary for uh, production, reproduction, and so on. But industrialism that just puts the focus on uh, like the development of uh, of uh, industry without like uh, yeah without its connection actually um, like to to social values, for example. Uh, this is the problem, for example, and this needs to be overcome. Um, okay, and then of course, like all the development uh, of capitalism, uh, all the development of uh, like yeah, certain form like uh, certain forms of uh, like how is property organized, how is work organized, uh, how are the gender relations uh, in this also like is very uh, crucial also. Uh, also, urbanization uh, related to this, no, like urbanization uh, as one. Uh, aspect so like the way how cities were growing actually how the balance between city and village was actually like from from a kind of a, like um, like a, a very fusion how to say like for, like a, uh, like neutral uh, relation somehow going much more into like a very imbalanced uh, kind of um, relation and um, yeah and um, so maybe I have to jump a few points because I see it's really already late, uh, unfortunately. And um, yeah, so what we see in all this, um, like in all this historical process now, it's like kind of um, like that, like we see the centralization of, uh, of power structures. We see like the objectification of uh, nature. We see the object objectification of uh, women also at the same time. And uh, we see that everything that like, uh, yeah, is more related also to like this kind of like, um, let's say values of, of natural uh, society is perceived as something dangerous, perceived as something uh, like out of this kind of civilization. But like what uh, is also saying is that exact this um, like continuation, uh, like um, ecological um, like approaches also is like is the base of uh, like what we can also um, like uh, change today, for example, no? or like uh, is the base is also the history on uh, on which we can build uh, today, uh, for example. And um, so um, yeah, I have to jump. Unfortunately, I have to jump a few points that I wanted to speak about, but. Um, one second, yeah, and of course, because I mean, what is the most important thing, uh, of course, is like this question of like, what means this ecological approach now, no, like, what does it mean for, uh, like, for, like, for the question of how we can overcome this global crisis right now, no, and so, like, what Abdullah Öcalan is, uh, like, putting a lot uh, of focus on is actually this um, like 
okay, like in order to uh, like overcome this uh, ecological crisis, this social crisis, this uh, like the situation of like third uh, third world war that we are actually in, um, like like one important point is that we have to overcome this uh, like this power relations that are actually based on domination and oppression. So like we have to overcome like this, uh, like uh, yeah, this division between subject and object. We have to overcome like uh, all these approaches of dominating nature, of ruling over nature, of colonizing, of exploiting nature, of uh, devaluating nature. And, um, and this, of course, it requires a change of mentality, first of all. And uh, this is very, very important. So it needs a, it needs a deep change uh, and a very wide change of uh, mentality. And uh, it needs a struggle for this, like in our own personalities and also in all areas of life and all areas of society. And uh, yeah, it needs a developing of this ecological consciousness and uh, mentality. And um, so, and like one important aspect is um, like it needs a communal and collective understanding of freedom, actually. So, uh, like in order to like uh, overcome like uh, individualism, in order to uh, overcome like uh, egoism, in order to overcome also um, like this kind of uh, approach, like um, like uh, anthropocentrism, no, like that that human just see themselves in the center. Like uh, yeah, we need to understand the. Uh, like we need to develop an under, like a collective understanding of freedom, no, and uh, if, like um, and uh, overcome this un individual understanding of freedom, no. So like uh, there's this uh, quotation of Audre Lorde, no, who's saying, okay, I'm not uh, free until uh, like there's any woman left uh, in chains, for example, no. And uh, like uh, like if we understand now this in a, in a wider way, we would add, okay, like we are free until all living beings are free, actually, no. Uh, uh, like all society is free and all living beings are free and uh, so like freedom like cannot be understood uh, as like just the freedom of individual choices for example no but freedom needs to be understood as a social freedom as a collective freedom as a like freedom where decisions are based also on like uh, the question of what is good uh, for society actually and um yeah, and uh, like so, for this, of course, it's very important to to understand like this deep connection between society and nature, actually. And um, yeah, and then uh, like another very important point is, um, uh, and this is also one very important uh, principle of the of the Kurdish uh, liberation uh, struggle uh, in general, and also the first principle of the women's liberation ideology that has been um, like announced in uh, 2008 on the 8th of March. Is like Vilad Parisi, which is uh, like the uh, like the love for the land, actually, like the love for the earth, the love for the society uh, we come from, and um, so like uh, related to this, like uh, of course it's important to develop this uh, like understanding of the of of the own society also, no, like the understanding of the roots, and uh, also to um, yeah somehow to to see that like everywhere uh, like there are traces and there are aspects of this uh, like kind of yeah what we can call natural society for example no it's something that has never been actually extinguished and in society we like in uh, history we always see this like traces of like egalitarian uh, like so communities societies for example no we always see this um um like uh, we always see this struggle of people for a holistic uh, way of living for example no and it's very very interesting uh, like uh, now how how to how to develop also this this love uh, for for the land for example no and um yeah and okay i have to jump more points actually um and um yeah so in general like overcoming this human centered perspective and um, like uh, yeah, kind of developing like really deep respect for for towards nature, for example, no, like uh, like to develop this approach of like towards nature, towards humans, towards uh, all living beings as also like um, yeah, somehow sacred, but not in this not in this uh, religious way, no, but like like really this deep respect uh, towards uh, towards the living actually. 
and um, yeah, and also to feel this, no, like it's not also about like emotional intelligence. It's like to develop also like a balance between this analytical way of thinking, analytical intelligence, and emotional intelligence also, no, like to uh, like to to have like to define knowledge also uh, not only as something that uh, comes with like uh, yeah with this uh, like reason like this um, like yeah uh, ratio i think like reason um or analytical understanding but also like knowledge is something that comes also like through feelings through the body through uh, landscapes and so on and so on and this is something that especially in in genealogy then uh, also um like we are working on and um yeah and uh, then of course like this this question of ecology, it also brings us to the question of, of human relationships. No, it's like on the one hand, it's a question of like how is the relationship with nature, but also it's the question of like how are we building relations in between humans, for example. No, like what is the meaning of love, for example? What is the meaning of friendship? Uh, what means mutuality actually? No, and uh, so like this, like the importance of ecological paradigm is also. To, to redefine actually our understanding of uh, relationships, for example. And um, like, I, I want to read you a quote, uh, like from uh, Medval, uh, who uh, also was part of the building committee of Jinwa, the women's village. And um, like, we were there in the village and speaking about like the meaning of uh, like Hefshiana Azad, of like free shared life. And uh, then she was saying something, and I want to read you this quote. Um, I hope the translation is understandable. Uh, so she said, uh, when we speak about ecology, then we don't mean only planting trees. Hefshiana Azad, the free shared life, we understand as a form of ecology as well, an ecology of love. Ecology for us means the balance between society and nature. You cannot just appropriate nature and then own it. It is a mutual, fertile relation, a balance from the clouds until the smallest atoms. Everything is related. This is what we believe, not related to a God, no. Our relation to nature is like a relation to the divine. Everything is alive. We don't speak the same language than animals, but our eyes and feelings let us communicate with each other. There is an ecology of the human as well. I'm breathing. I take oxygen and other elements from the atmosphere. They are part of me. I eat this plant, she becomes part of me, and when I die, I become earth, and the plant eats me. We complete each other. So, yeah, this was a was a quote um, like um, of uh, of uh, Rumetjewald, and um, yeah, so so like he was also um, yeah. We see also like this uh, yeah that. No, like also what Abdullah Öcalan uh, stresses uh, so much, no, that like this eco ecological uh, consciousness or like uh, understanding of the world, it also is related to uh, another like understanding of uh, love, another understanding of human relationships, another understanding of uh, like freedom, another understanding also of, uh, for example, beauty and aesthetics, no, like what uh, what we perceive as as good, what we perceive as beautiful, what we perceive as beautiful. so, uh, all this uh, also we have question when we uh, when we really want to to develop uh, like this kind of holistic understanding uh, of the world, and um, yeah, and it is uh, about to yeah to re reconstruct also this these values, this understanding of the world, and this is a very crucial uh, cr very very crucial aspect of actually evolution uh, and um, and uh, yeah and as like I mean the the talk was also about this question no like ecology as a revolutionary paradigm no ecology uh, because it's uh, like one of the the three uh, pillars actually of democratic confederalism no like which uh, is like the one pillar is uh, democracy or like democratic uh, democratic society actually no like not in the sense of like represent uh, representative uh, democracy but really like uh, yeah like the self organization of people no like this uh, then this then ecology and then also women's liberation uh, which is which means gender liberation uh, actually and um, yeah so uh, what what on this base also what means then uh, like ecology 
for the revolutionary struggle, no? like how, how do we understand it as a part of democratic confederalism also. And um, I think it was also part of the, of the webinar about uh, like the question of like the redefinition of revolution. No? So uh, I think uh, like um, Meral, uh, she was speaking about this. So like revolution, uh, according to, to Abdullah Öcalan, according to the Kurdish freedom uh, movement, is not that moment of an uprising, like a boom kind of, and then like we have a new society and so on and so on. Like, but like revolution actually means to like to overcome like all these old systems of state, of patriarchy, of capitalism by developing new approaches, like by developing a new reality actually. Uh, and um, also by actually understanding uh, like the the reality that is there and what we want to want to create, for example, and um, yeah, and uh, like revolution means to build and to defend uh, democratic modernity in all areas of life, and uh, so like um, and very crucial uh, in this is uh, that like yeah that uh, actually the importance of overcoming the state. So Echelan is saying uh, no, like the state cannot be a solution, uh, like the state. Uh, and this is also very, very crucial, you know, in the history of the of the Kurdish freedom movement. You know, like to come to the uh, conclusion to say, okay, the state cannot be a solution for a problem that actually like was created through like the state mentality. You know, like this mentality of centralization, mentality of uh, uh, oppression, of hierarchy, and so on. And um, like, of course, like related to ecology, one could say, huh, but the state is necessary, you know, like the state has the executive power, the power to put laws, for example, to uh, limit, uh, I don't know, like the pollution, to limit, uh, like to, to, I don't know, to forbid uh, certain things, to make regulations, make punishments, and so on. But like what Echelan is saying is no, like this will not, like this will be just a, superficial change this is not this will not create really change no but what re what really creates change is to go to the roots of the problem and is to overcome the state uh, and all the state mentality all this all these practices and uh, like the same with patriarchy and with uh, capitalism also no so uh, and there we have to start actually and um yeah and for this of course it needs uh, consciousness it needs change of mentality and um, uh, and it needs uh, like social change, like this, uh, like building alternatives in all fields of life, uh, of course. And like this is also what what uh, democratic confederalism is, no? So uh, it's like uh, yeah, it's it's uh, this uh, this concept also of like the democratic and ecological uh, society uh, with the gender uh, like with the, on the base of women's liberation of gender liberation, and uh, that. Yeah, that in its core is uh, yeah like this free and uh, like a way of organizing of like a free and uh, ecological uh, society, and um, so the the in the core is not that like the people the communities uh, find actually their, their own uh, solutions for problems, no? like and. Um, like instead of like a like a big centralization, like to have very much the focus on like a local step organization, local uh, processes of decision making, and uh, and then uh, like councils, no, like the importance of municipalities, uh, and uh, then of course like having also like uh, federations, no, like so having uh, instead of centralization, actually like a coordination together also, no, and. Um, yeah, and all this we can say like actually that the idea of democratic confederalism is in itself also ecological. You no, know? like ecology is one of the three main pillars, but at the same time, like the whole paradigm, like the whole uh, concept of democratic confederalism is is a very ecological one. You no, know? because it's like uh, yeah, it's it's embracing the unity in diversity. You no, know? it's, it's on this idea of. Uh, like actually it's it's coming from the it's coming from the roots somehow no it's not something that is like a bureaucratical system that is kind of put on 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 people but it's something that is growing somehow no it's based on uh, it's based on the uh, the communes no it's based on the councils it's based on like uh, people building cooperatives it's based on uh, like uh, people's academies no like another approach to towards uh, knowledge and towards learning also no and uh, and at the same time, of course, like having this, what we have in an ecosystem also, no, like having this connections uh, uh, between, no? and uh, so this 
is very interesting and uh, like or very crucial. And this we is is also uh, yeah this we find in this idea of uh, of social ecology uh, also. And uh, Öcalan yeah criticizes a lot uh, like this uh, like liberal approaches towards uh, ecological problems. No like. Uh, somehow to say, uh, yeah, what I mentioned before with the state, for example, no, okay, uh, to say, okay, like with 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 a little bit better technology, we can um, like we can avoid uh, the pollution, for example, uh, with uh, like I don't know, with with a bit more uh, green uh, consumption, no, we can we can overcome the problem, all ecological problems, and so on. Uh, or I don't know if you buy uh, something and then like one one. Uh, like one part will go to plant a tree or something, no? Like, but like, okay, what what uh, Achalan is saying that no, this is not enough exactly, no? Like, this is exactly not enough, but we have to go to the root uh, of the of the problem, which is uh, like this, mm, yeah, mentality of of uh, like the patriarchy actually and the state, uh, which have to be overcome, and. Um, yeah, and then like practically there are a lot of like Öcalan uh, like mentions a lot of uh, different forms also of, of uh, organizing, for example, you know, there's also um, like, um, yeah, the, the, the idea of eco industry, for example, like, um, uh, and uh, which is like exactly like the, th the idea of, okay, like, uh, yeah, like, like society somehow needs uh, a form of uh, forms of production. No, it needs forms of reproduction. It needs uh, like um, this, and uh, but it cannot happen in this framework of capitalism, and it cannot happen in the framework of like a uh, industry. How is happening right now? No, for example, because also the form of industry that that we see right now, it's it's uh, yeah, it's like on the one hand, uh, yeah, it's it's not based on the needs of of uh, of uh, society. It's not based on on the needs of uh, like nature, let's say. No, it's uh, and on the other hand, it's also making a global uh, like um, inequality. No, a lot because uh, yeah, mostly the the dirty parts of of the industry they are in like uh, poorer countries, and uh, meanwhile, like the richer countries, they like uh, yeah, they keep their uh, backyard clean, kind of no. So this is all. It's in itself, it's a very big problem, and uh, like this idea of eco industry um, is saying okay, like we we uh, like it's necessary to develop uh, like a kind of uh, industry that is based actually on ecological values, on social values, and uh, yeah, that is like um, built on. Like a uh, yeah more this cooperative idea of of the uh, economy actually no so it cannot be part of of a capitalist uh, idea of of uh, economy also and um, yeah and like uh, how is uh, how is this different from like a kind of idea of like this kind of green capitalism is different because it's related to to a whole like social change it's different uh, it's, it's related to a whole like revolutionary uh, movement revolutionary struggle. Uh, for change, no, it's related to like people self-organization also in a political way. People self-organization in like many other uh, fields of uh, society. Again, I have to unfortunately on some points, which is a pity because there are so many important things. But okay, we still also have the discussion with it, which is great. Um, yeah, and then next to this idea of the uh, eco uh, industry, actually also like uh, the idea of eco uh, communities so that um, yeah kind of um, people organize on 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 the way of um, like on the base of eco uh, communities uh, kind of and uh, that can like can uh, be formed by like uh, creating for example agricultural units uh, but also like other uh, kind of um, like communities and um, yeah and that also can can be uh, like established in cities, for example, no? And um, yeah, and also within whom, like within which, for example, also property is organized uh, differently. And um, yeah, and then um, yeah, there's also uh, many other points, of course. Like one important point maybe to mention um, is um, oh, I see the time is really running and there's questions also. So I will okay, I will try to finish now very fast. I will just uh, <laughs> summarize these points maybe. So like one important thing uh, also is um, 
like in in building these alternatives is also like a self defense for example no that like Abdullah Öcalan always stresses that every living being has has their methods of of self defense also no can be like rose for example has the thorns or like the uh, like there are animals that are always in herds for example no like or with with many for example and defending in this way and um, so like uh, also like this uh, yeah like also self defense is is part of an ecological uh, understanding no and um so um yeah and uh, for example this is something that uh, like that is is of course here especially in in rojava or in north and east syria also very crucial no that um like this thing of okay like building up and at the same time defending also no and finding different forms of self defense and but seeing also that the like the building of alternatives uh, is the biggest self defense actually like uh, because it's uh, yeah it's the strongest self defense it's the most sustainable uh, form of self defense actually and uh, on the other hand also like when we see like uh, democratic confederalism like organizing uh, like globally kind of uh, like building uh, alliances uh, like in the struggle for a free and ecology, uh, ecological society is also part of the self defense for example and so like it's this thing of okay like also as different as people from like with roots in different places of the world no as different communities as different societies like if we develop an an understanding like which can be rooted in this ecological understanding that actually transcends all the borders and um like then we can like uh, yeah then we can develop uh, like a form of strategic alliance also that means like learning from each other that means nurturing each other that means um like uh, yeah going through also an evolu uh, evolution of of uh, thought and of practice uh, together and uh, yeah this is i think very uh, crucial or uh, also what we uh, need to do maybe also what we are actually doing also through through discussions like this and uh, yeah so this is very very uh, important you know, like to under to develop an understanding of how we want to live of how like what means this this um, like system change for example you no know, like what means uh, a free and ecological society and uh, yeah like also evaluate the experiences for example uh, and so on and for this of course it needs also spaces it needs like uh, people's academies it needs communal houses it needs uh, like uh, communal gardens it needs the cooperatives uh, and uh, like where actually like life and struggle uh, and reflection can come together uh, and yeah and um, yeah and then and unfortunately I have to jump <laughs> a lot of points I wanted to shortly speak also about um, like ecology and practical examples uh, of it uh, because of course like especially like here in uh, Kurdistan, like uh, a lot of occupation, a lot of war, uh, a lot of warfare uh, has been also uh, done uh, through attacks on nature, actually. Uh, and um, so, like, I mean, already the the drawing of the uh, of state borders, no, like, has been like a very like a very crucial, very violent uh, intervention, also in like actually the 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 ecosystems and the social. Uh, social bonds no like uh, so when in uh, like uh, the borders uh, have been drawn like um, like with the Lausanne treaty of uh, 1923 like it cut it off like people from each other on the one on uh, no and also like for example uh, like all the like there was also very much like the like the tradition of of uh, the nomadic people to for example uh, like be here in the in the uh, and then, like, uh, like uh, spend se spend some seasons also here in the mountains, no? Like, and uh, then come back, for example, for the next season. No? And for example, all this uh, has been made impossible through the drawing of the borders, no? And then, on the other hand, of course, all the warfare, uh, different forms of warfare, like, um, like uh, the through the dam projects, for example, no? Like Hassan Cave in in uh, North Kurdistan. Like from the 1990s, uh, actually different projects like this until uh, today, uh, which uh, yeah, like uh, of course are a big uh, 
intervention of the state in like the the ecosystems no and also in uh, yeah and also aiming actually uh, to to repress uh, resistance at the same time no like burning down of like uh, uh, so like hundreds uh, of villages uh, for example you know and uh, making people flee to or like migrate forced um, migration to the cities for example where then uh, people become uh, like cheap labor force or uh, like kind of being forced to assimilate into into the state uh, politics for example into the state um, like systems for example you know and so uh, this of course like this has a very big influence on the on the struggle of uh, the Kurdish people uh, always and uh, of course also in the different parts of Kurdistan in a different way you know so in in like here the like the um like north and east Syria you no know, like related to uh, the Syrian territory where like for example the industrialization of agriculture had to impact on like how people could actually uh, sustain their living you no know? like how people could uh, like uh, uh, yeah, actually, people were uh, like expropriated, or people were uh, like were uh, not able to to work on their um, like or to, to uh, yeah to to uh, work on the land and to uh, have the uh, how to say like uh, to uh, yeah to organize with uh, on their own land. And um, yeah, and uh, then of course, like many other uh, parts now, like the, the warfare with water, uh, which is uh, very heavy uh, also this year uh, and the years before also that uh, like the Turkish state just cuts off the water uh, from uh, flow uh, to North and East Syria. And in this way, like, uh, yeah, kind of trying to uh, provoke a drying, like a desertification of the region, no? like provoking also that, uh, uh, yeah, people cannot sustain living here, which is of course like a big, uh, uh, yeah, a big weapon uh, also. And this, um, yeah, and then of course like the most uh, recent also like the the use of the poison uh, gas uh, against the uh, guerrilla in the mountains uh, of Kurdistan also, which is. Uh, yeah, of course, like ecologically uh, a big uh, attack and also uh, like humanly like a, a big attack. And um, yeah, and I also wanted to speak actually about um, positive examples of resistance and of like how ecology is uh, lived uh, actually uh, here. And uh, yeah, I wanted to actually speak about uh, Jinwar, uh, the women's village, because I also uh, lived there uh, and worked there for uh, quite uh, like yeah, more than two and a half years, I think, and uh, yeah, because this is a very yeah, a very vivid and a very um, yeah, very important example also of like how this ecological paradigm can be uh, like can be practiced, no? Like, and of course, like um, so, like uh, Jinwa is a place where like women uh, and children are living together, creating communal life. Uh, on the base also of uh, of ecology, on the base of women's liberation, uh, and um, like of course on the base of the whole uh, revolution that that uh, like uh, happened and is continuing to happen here in uh, Rojava in North and East Syria, and um, yeah, so like uh, maybe what what can be important to say that like the village how the way how it has been built for example it was. Uh, like very much based on mutual relations also with the surrounding, like with the land, but also with uh, with the villages, like with the with the neighbors, for example. You no, know? and this is also, of course, this is also part of an ecological understanding. You no, know? like this mutuality, um, and um, so, like for example, also before the building process started, there were um, like trees have been built there, like gardens have been uh, built, there, uh, like uh, built. <laughs> Trees have been planted, gardens have been <laughs> planted there, like to actually recover the soil, you know, because as I said, there was like this uh, huge uh, industrialization of agriculture um, enforced by the uh, Syrian state also. So like the land was very uh, like uh, devastated or the land was very, um, yeah, very tired, very dried out actually. And so this was one part of like, uh, yeah, reviving actually also the ground. And uh, then of course, like, um, yeah, and then like also trying to develop actually other forms of agriculture, you no? Know? Like trying to overcome this, this, uh, this, the use 
of like, for example, chemical uh, fertilizers, pesticides and so on, which is very difficult because the Syrian state like uh, propagated the use of those very much. So uh, it also needs a, a change or a, like a re-switch uh, to this more ecological forms of agriculture. And then also, of course, the, the, um, like the methods of building because the village uh, has been built with uh, like uh, like uh, adobe bricks, so it's uh, made of like these bricks. They are made of uh, earth, of water, of straw. So very like all materials that can be actually found uh, in in the direct surrounding, for example. Now it's also like the traditional way of building uh, that that uh, is is uh, used uh, here in the region, and also it's very much fitting to the climate. No, so and. Um, yeah, and it's, it's in this way, uh, like very sustainable also for the energy, uh, for example, like there was the, the um, yeah, there's the aim to like, uh, yeah, find also other forms of like for, for the energy, like sustainable forms for gaining uh, energy. And uh, like, so there are solar panels, for example, in the village, no? And then also like the big importance of the topic of health uh, in relation to ecology also, no? So uh, in Genoa, there has been uh, built like the, like, um, uh, like the, uh, yeah, kind of women's, huh? Uh, yeah, which is is this uh, health uh, center which combines like actually modern medicine with uh, like natural forms of healing, natural medicine, and this understanding also a holistic understanding of health. No, so like health is not something that can be just uh, like uh, achieved with like taking some pills, but it's related to a whole way of living. Also, no, it's it's related to uh, like uh, yeah healing each other. It's related to uh, actually caring it's related to um, like educating to supporting and so on so it's related to the whole way of, of uh, living and um, yeah and there was this one uh, friend also saying okay like nothing heals more than freedom no so this is also very is very crucial is very crucial also for understanding the, the uh, like uh, ecological uh, paradigm actually and uh, yeah and then like uh, yeah the creation of ecological consciousness actually no and how how for example also in Genoa like uh, the women are organizing themselves no like in the village council for example you know you like uh, it's it's uh, yeah it's very uh, vivid it's very vivid example also of uh, of this and um, yeah and of course genealogy in general I wanted to speak also more about this but I think the time completely went so uh, okay. yeah <laughs> Hello. I mean, thank, yeah. thank you very much for that. I do think there's a question about that. So maybe I can ask the questions and some of the things you have missed, it will probably get incorporated in the answer. Okay. Um, so there's kind of two sets of questions. One is more about practical things which you have touched upon, but maybe as a continuation, I will ask them and you can focus on it a little bit more. So there's three questions about like some of the pra practical stuff. So I'll ask them and you know, I'm sure there'll be things that you can add that you were also going to speak about. So someone said, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. My question is, how do you put this ecological, these ecological ideas into practice in everyday life? What are the main barriers in implementation of those ideas among Kurdish communities? Another one is, how can people in societies insulated from nature by consumerism and make a transition to sustainability, which I think you already touched on, but maybe there's more you can say. And then there's another one that says, thank you very much for your talk, Nujin. Currently, what would you say were the most visible and impactful projects to promote ecological ideas in Northeast Syria or the wider Kurdish region, which I think some of these you touched on, but you were of course also trying to be quick about it because of time, but maybe, you know, some of the things that you didn't mention when you were talking about this, you can mention when answering the questions. And the other set of questions, which I think would be perhaps a way to bring genealogy in is I'll ask them as well, so you can kind of do it all at once and then um, we will conclude. Someone said, I have a question. You mentioned the mother goddess concept and the con connection of women and nature in that context. While such, while such perception of a woman certainly has emancipatory connotations in this context, it seems that it does presuppose the existence of some sort of fixed essence of a woman. 
if that is the case, how do we decide what that essence is? How does creating new systems of knowledge allow us to define this essence? And how do we prevent it from deriving the knowledge and experiences we obtained through thousands of years of living under patriarchal systems, where the essentialist view of a woman was used to subjugate women, patriarchal concept of a mother as a servant of her husband and child versus a liberatory concept of mother as a symbol of life and creation, which I think you were going to talk about, like the consciousness raising of genealogy, and perhaps you could touch on with that. And then there's an, one last question where it says, hi, Nujin. Uh, hi, everyone. And Nujin, I wanted to ask, where can I find more information about the prehistorical matriarchy you quoted and, Oj and Ojalan also tw talked about? Thank you again. So, yeah, these are the questions. And maybe mm -hmm. we can answer them within, if possible, within 10 or 15 minutes. OK. Okay, uh, that is, of course, again, a lot of points. I will try to like summarize uh, some. And there was this question about uh, like what would be um, like maybe the most influensive or the most um, like visible or also um, like not of ecological uh, changes uh, like uh, here. And um, of course, I cannot uh, like. For sure, I cannot talk about all, uh, or I don't, uh, probably I don't, I mean, I don't know about all uh, of them. What I can most uh, speak about is uh, like uh, the part where uh, I'm also now right here. So like the Rojava in North and East Syria, uh, because like, uh, of course, like the whole revolutionary process that uh, is happening here uh, is very much inspired also by this, uh, like, ecological paradigm no so like from the beginning like uh, in the process of like uh, building up uh, like uh, like these structures of self organization or no? like ecology ecology was always a part of it also no like uh, of course not not uh, enough uh, this for sure also and uh, this has to do of course a lot with uh, like the warfare that is happening you no know? like a lot of times like uh, through continuous attacks for example there's somehow like the yeah, the pressure to to act uh, also uh, sometimes in in a short term way, for example, and then for example the ecological uh, like perspective, which is this very very long term perspective at the same time, then sometimes it it cannot have so much uh, focus, for example. But at the same time, like because like the whole revolution is built on it, it has been always a focus also, no, and also with the idea of okay, like developing ecological consciousness and like developing actually like uh, like approaches that that are based on this long time the long term perspective like uh, yeah, actually this is the only way how we can uh, like how we can uh, like really change something or how this revolution can actually really be a revolution also in the long term and um, so like yeah what to say so like uh, like the one thing, like this question of like how actually to uh, develop this uh, ecological mentality, no? This has been a very important uh, point. So for example, uh, like uh, all over uh, Rojava, North and East Syria, there is a lot, a lot of people's academies, no? So it's places where uh, people come together, uh, like educate, uh, like uh, there's like a lot of discussions going on and on. Like ecology is always part of this, uh, like um, yeah, of this education, of these discussions also, and also it's, and it, this is also a way how to share actually like this ecological paradigm, how to discuss it, how to uh, like bring this reflection or like how to share this reflection also with uh, with the wider parts of society that uh, yeah that maybe were not so connected to this question uh, before. So this is one very important point. Also that uh, it becomes part of uh, like yeah of seminars of that are held in communes, for example, no seminars that are held in, uh, like through the municipalities, no, like through the, how is it called in, in English, I think municipalities. And um, like, so, so, yeah, the topic of ecology is really part of, uh, yeah, part of this, this uh, popular uh, education, part of this, 
discussion processes also no this is one thing i think very important uh, and then like uh, of course like for example uh, the like the the aim uh, to develop like to build uh, cooperatives no so like really this uh, like uh, yeah decentralization uh, of uh, economy uh, like this uh, of agri agriculture also no like to develop uh, other forms of agriculture that uh, are not like this uh, monoculture agriculture that has been uh, like uh, pushed so much by the Syrian state before. Uh, so I think this is also a very important point. And uh, in these cooperatives, um, like they have been made a lot of experiences also. No? There have been uh, like really a lot of uh, cooperatives that have been built. Uh, some had really good outcomes. Some there was problems, then they, they stopped again. And then uh, now there has been like in the last year, there have been uh, a lot of new cooperatives actually opened on the base of the experiences uh, from, from the years before. And, of course, like all these cooperatives, they also deal like with this, uh, yeah, with this question of like how to, uh, yeah, how to how to, um, yeah, make economy in an ecological way. You know how how it goes together, and uh, I think this is also a continuous process of uh, experiences, continuous process of uh, reflection. Uh, on the other hand, um, like I think what what is Interesting also, like, and this is very, very, is, is more recent actually, there has been uh, founded uh, like an ecological um, uh, council, uh, which is kind of continuation of, of uh, like uh, ecological committee uh, committees that have been existed before, but it was kind of the step, uh, like a reflection of uh, how the topic of ecology was uh, dealt with in the last years. And it was kind of the, Conclusion, uh, which has been made uh, actually by women related to Congresta, to the to the um, uh, women's movement, uh, that the topic of ecology was not uh, yeah was not um, dealt with in a in in a wide enough way. Let's say no. So now this there's uh, since some months actually this ecological council is existing, and it brings like together again like people from uh, like our very different structures actually. No, so. Uh, like there's, for example, genealogy, like the science of women is also part of it, but also uh, the municipalities, for example, also um, like, uh, uh, like uh, education uh, committee, for example, you know? also a health committee, like uh, different health structures, like so, um, and um, like so, yeah, it's actually different structures coming together, uh, debating, evaluating, uh, like how, how, uh, how, Things have been going the last years and making proposals, making proposals, making uh, like also different uh, projects. And this is just in short, so this is uh, like a very, uh, yeah, very important uh, step also. Um, and then, um, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, different other, uh, different other uh, campaigns, for example. There's always, I mentioned already the, uh, like the people's companies, but also like there's uh, different, campaigns that have been already always being run, for example, through posters, through, for example, through, uh, like, I don't know, different actions, uh, like, uh, like planting uh, things, also planting uh, trees at the same time, like kind of, uh, yeah, waking, waking consciousness of people uh, in very uh, different ways. Uh, one important thing, maybe also in, in international scale, like the Make Rojava Green Again uh, campaign, uh, that was very, uh, yeah, I think like in this process it ha has also uh, like a uh, yeah, big importance, big role also in uh, connecting actually uh, internationally. And um, yeah, also uh, there's uh, one new kind of Mm, movement or crew, which is like the Kesian Kesk. Uh, they also work on uh, like ecological questions, uh, having especially uh, like the project of uh, yeah, kind of re reforestation and also like a change of of the like how to say like uh, yeah re uh, yeah also making making Rojava green again actually. In a way, and then uh, yeah, of course, like I mean, Genoa is one example also, and I think uh, what can be said also uh, like about the role of Genoa that um, like uh, yeah, it's very important to have this kind of 
like next to the general uh, understanding or like uh, of, of ecology in all uh, in all areas of life it's also very important to have this very concrete examples no because then people see okay ah it's possible to to do uh, like agriculture in this way ah it's possible to approach to this in this way uh, for example no ah it's possible to organize uh, communally in in villages uh, in this way for example no and so Mm, yeah, it's somehow yeah this possibility through through this kind of concrete examples within the framework of the revolution uh, to yeah to inspire to uh, like create uh, connections to uh, yeah push forward also this this idea uh, like a paradigm of ecology you know so maybe uh, to say this and um, yeah and then there was this question about like this understanding of um, the like woman or the mother, for example, no, also in uh, pre patriarchal times, and uh, I can write also some uh, like some sources where you could read or you could make re more research. Also, uh, so like Abdullah Achalan uh, also writes a lot uh, about this actually, no, in the like um, in the sociology of freedom, for example, it appears also in. Uh, like a beyond um, like power, state power and um, violence in English, and uh, for example, no? so there it appears uh, as well. And uh, then, like what is very uh, interesting also is uh, like the writings of Heide Göttner Abendroth, uh, which I can type here maybe, because she's making a lot of research. Well, Uh, she's making a lot of research uh, about, um, yeah, actually these kind of cultures, also about like uh, different forms of uh, mythologies, different forms of uh, like social organization also from pre-patriarchal times until the present day, actually, which is very interesting and also seeing it um, like in a, yeah, in a political way, no, because that's, that's also the point. And uh, so there's actually... Uh, many uh, parallels to to uh, like uh, conclusions that uh, Abdullah Achalan is uh, making, and um, yeah, and then for this question of um, like yeah, how how to understand the or like how to deal with this question of what what means woman, no? Like how how do we deal with this? Um, yeah, also this. this yeah, maybe this this uh, difficulty that like this understanding of nature of woman, for example, has been used in a very abusive way uh, in history also, no? So, uh, because I think that is the basic problem, no? Like when when we speak about uh, women, for example, I think the the, the 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 problem that appears here is that actually like this this uh, category of woman, this understanding of woman, has been used so much to oppress uh, like women and to oppress uh, like other genders, for example, also no? in uh, in uh, in history also and but for example, like what what um, like in the Kurdish freedom movement is the idea also it's like to to actually free this this uh, idea of of women also from all these abusive conceptions, for example, no like to really go back uh, in history also to see like what different forms of of um, yeah, of, of living like a woman identity, for example, where, for example, no, and uh, what kind of different, uh, yeah, how actually, like also in within history, this this strange, like uh, categories, gender categories have been actually established as part of uh, like developing of patriarchy, for example, no, and um, I think that, for example, and this is something very important in genealogy also is like this redefinition of what are actually the values of uh, like of like women for example what are the values of society also is part of like it's a process actually you know it's also a process it's a social process it's a co collective process that we are making actually you know and there's also um like yeah somehow like i mean there are some things for example we can we can we can find in in the basis of society you know like how uh, for example, no, I was mentioning, for example, this idea of uh, of motherhood in a in a social sense, for example, no, like this idea of okay, like 
nurturing each other, this idea of like giving life actually, like giving birth, but giving birth in a sense also of like a, like bringing life somehow, no? And like, and again, like not in this, only in this um, like biological way, but in a social way also, no? And uh, I think this is something that like really, yeah, when, when we, when we look uh, inside is something that, yeah, that is very, 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 um, yeah, seems even very simple, but it's a very, like, it's very important, no? It's very important, like, uh, like values, actually. And yeah, like the re recreation of these values, the redefinition of, of the values is actually one very important part of revolution, no? Is one very important part of, like, what we need to do, uh, in fact, to, to develop this kind of free and ecological society. And uh, yeah, and like, uh, this is also one role of, uh, like, of, of, uh, of genealogy, for example, no? Genealogy as, as a science of uh, women, science of life, science of uh, society is exactly starting here, like, is trying to, like, uh, develop, a, like, an understanding of knowledge and, and uh, like, and the mentality that, like, uh, yeah, that, forms an alternative to this patriarchal uh, and state mentality, for example, no? and, and one part of this is, of course, to listen, what means woman, uh, what means uh, man, what means society, what means all this, for example, and also, uh, yes, has to be redefined, this is part of revolution, and um, this is also part of, uh, like, uh, uh, is it in Kurdish, no, like the, uh, the being and becoming of of, of oneself, of ourselves, actually, you know, and this is also very, very interesting to, to see, you know, that uh, like a struggle for liberation is always connected also with this khobun, with becoming uh, ourselves, actually, with like uh, with with a search, actually, for what is what is this what makes uh, what makes society, what is this what what makes what makes us, what are our roots, for example, you know, like understanding our own roots, understanding ourselves, understanding the the land, the society, uh, and all of this that, that makes us actually um, like a, a grow, makes a, makes our existence also. No? And yeah, and this Khabun, it, it implies that it's it's a it's a process uh, also. And um, yeah, and I think it would be very interesting to to discuss about this. Unfortunately, we have this uh, format, of course, that we cannot uh, sit now next to each other and discuss it because this would be very great. Uh, but um, yeah, I think this could be maybe one uh, final uh, sentence also. Like, uh, of course, now, like maybe I could mention a few points, but uh, I think I uh, had to jump many other points. And um, I think, uh, yeah, what would be great, like uh, everyone who was now listening also to, uh, yeah, themselves to, to, to read, for example, what was um, like Öcalan writing about this topic, to read other things, to make research and also to come together and discuss about this topic, actually, you know, like to, uh, to come together to discuss about this, to, um, like to, to connect also spaces where this kind of discussions or this kind of uh, practice uh, is also happening. And I think, uh, yeah, this is also part of, of this development and uh, for a free and ecological society. And um, yeah, hope to see you also live, maybe here in Rojava, North and East Syria, maybe elsewhere. And uh, yeah, how? <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Nujin, and um, for this really important discussion and perspective, and particularly at this time, um, when supposedly, you know, world leaders are coming together to talk about the climate crisis. But, you know, I guess we all know how that will turn out. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for everyone who joined either on Zoom or on YouTube. If you did join on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the Women Weaving Future YouTube channel to stay in, up to date with um, all the seminars and talks that will be happening um, and have a good night or a good day wherever you are in the world. Take care. Thank you.